So in the last discussion, we basically showed that um, the hydrostatic model of the solar corona or more, more generally the um, I mean the corona of any star cannot be um, valid only because it gives us a pressure which is non-zero and considerable at infinity okay now it basically led to think uh, people that uh, I mean the corona is not hydrostatically stable okay so that means that corona is uh, I mean dynamic and it's a flow right it's flowing and after that various spacecrafts they showed that I mean the spacecraft measured uh, the I mean by in situ measurements finally now nowadays we understand that uh, I mean the, the coronal plasma and the cor or the or the coronal fluid is basically expanding okay outward in the outward radially outward direction from the sun okay almost in an isotropic way almost okay there is a small anisotropy due to magnetic field that's true but almost in an isotropic way and this is known as the so-called stellar wind okay and for sun we talk about solar wind correspondingly okay so in this lecture we will discuss this stellar wind or solar wind so now Parker was the first one who concluded that the solar corona or the The solar corona or the corona of any star cannot be kept in hydrostatic equilibrium only by the interplay of gravity and hydrostatic pressure. Okay. Or in an in an alternative way, the I mean I mean one can say that the corona of a star can be in hydrostatic equilibrium only if there is something to I mean account for a finite pressure at infinity. And we all know that in reality, uh, the pressure at infinity should be very small unless there is some agent to, I mean, account for the pressure. Okay. So infinity means that the there is no mass, there is no plasma. I mean, ideally, of course, if there is a source which is a distant source, okay, that is also sometimes possible. That we will come at the very end of this uh, discussion. Okay, then it is possible. Now, uh, in general, the pressure at infinity is quite small and I mean, actually it's very near to zero. Okay. And then the fluid or the plasma of the corona expands in outer space. And this is known as the stellar wind or solar wind. I just said, okay. So in the year 1958, Parker predicted for the first time this coronal outflow in the form of solar wind. Okay. But the model with which he started his uh, work was a very simplified model and the model nowadays, I mean, uh, with respect to today's consideration, the model has, uh, I mean, one or two things which are not completely correct. But yet this, I mean, even, we, uh, even with this very simplified model, Parker reached with, I mean, reached uh, to a number of important conclusions, okay, that we will discuss. So the basic assumptions of Parker's model was, of course, a steady spherical flow in re radially outward direction of the coronal plasma, okay. Although he realized very well that this is a plasma, this is an ionized charged, I mean, fluid with charged particles or ionized particles so ions electrons will be there mostly but as a first approximation he assumed his model to be constituted of neutral fluids okay and that's why we are talking in this context otherwise i would have talked about this after introducing plasma and the plasma fluids okay and finally he said that we don't have to think about the energy equation because we will assume a simplified isothermal closure for the solar wind and this is also not a very very uh, good approximation for the solar wind because I mean the coronal plasma because 
most of the cases the temperature is not constant so some people do it with polytropic closure okay that is somehow much more closer to reality than isothermal one but he did this just to start off okay so polytropic closure means t is constant so p is nothing but kbt by m okay times rho so this is another way of writing so rho by m is n so n kbt so p is equal to n kbt and if you write in this way then kb t by m all are constants for an isothermal case so you can say this is a constant times rho so pressure should be proportional to density in an isothermal fluid and the proportionality constant you can easily remember what is this this is nothing but kb t by m which is equal to the sound speed square so already people knew about i mean the sound speed in a medium so we all know that for a medium i mean i will i will also come in uh, come into the detailed derivation of sound wave uh, for compressible fluids but much before that people used to know that sound wave is produced by the <clears throat> pressure and density variation of a compressible fluid and dp by d rho okay is given i mean gives the sound wave speed okay mostly i mean this gives the square of the sound wave speed to be precise and for a isothermal case dp by d rho is nothing but p by rho and which is equal to cs square but only for isothermal case your sound speed is a constant for polytropic fluid non isothermal polytropic fluid this is no longer true okay so this is sound speed square okay <clears throat> now the governing equations we can now written in this way so first of all we said this is steady flow so that means all the del del t will go away and so this is the continuity residual part of the continuity equation divergence of rho v is equal to 0 now when we are talking about a spherical symmetric case with only radially outward flow then the this will be i mean the divergence will be written in a spherically symmetric way and the only non vanishing velocity will be the radial part of the velocity so let's say here basically when we write this we assume that v is nothing but v r cap okay so i am not saying anything like vr i am simply saying this is v r cap okay for simplicity if you do that finally you can show that r square times rho v is a constant of the flow okay then if you do the if you differentiate both sides with respect to r okay so now these things are the function of r only so del or d they are the both the same so now you differentiate both sides with respect to r and you will have 2 times r rho v plus r square d rho dr times v plus r square rho times dv dr that is equal to 0 okay and then again dividing the whole thing by r square rho v of course here we should assume that r square rho v is never equal to 0 okay then you can say that this is the final equation comes to be uh, 2 by r plus 1 by rho d rho dr plus 1 by v dv dr is equal to 0 okay now this is the residual part of the momentum equation for uh, i mean spherically symmetric case uh, sorry steady flow sorry steady flow so del del v del t del rho v del t is going away so, or rather it should be rho times del v del t which is now zero because del anything's del del t is zero and this part we have to write in uh, spherical uh, coordinates so this will simply be rho v dv dr okay because only the radial component of velocity survives gradient of p is dp dr okay so minus dp dr and what about this one so this one is simply minus gm solar by r square again we are assuming that the coronal plasma is inside the gravitational uh, field of the uh, sun 
whole sun okay i mean excluding the mass of the solar plasma if you want because it in any case does not i mean sorry coronal plasma in any case the addition or subtraction of the coronal plasma doesn't change much to the solar mass okay so uh, that is something to uh, know also that uh, i mean so it, it is good that if you search the rough ratio of the coronal plasma mass in general and the total solar mass then it will be clear okay then finally uh, you can just write <coughs> uh, just substituting p by cs square times rho this equation okay there is no other change other than this substituting p by cs square rho and cs is a constant of the system so we have we can simply write this equation number two now we can actually divide the whole thing of two by one by r and uh, i mean actually uh, divide by cs square by rho not one by r cs square by rho so that this term will then be equal to one by rho d rho dr and then you have one one by rho d rho dr and then you equal yeah, i mean you equate these two expressions of d rho dr and if you do that perfectly so check at home you should obtain this 2 c s square by r plus c s square by v d v dr is equal to v d v dr plus g m solar by r square okay which after simplification comes out to be v minus c s square by v times d v dr is equal to 2 c s square by r minus g m solar r square okay so these two terms okay so this is the term related to the velocity gradient okay now in this total equation okay so this is this is the parker's equation for the isothermal solar winds uh, wind considering this as a steady flow this is the uh, i mean this is the flow equation so this is a steady flow so but the velocity is non zero so velocity should have a gradient with respect to the radial coordinates right uh, now you can it is a very good exercise you can do at home yourself if you are blocked then i can help or you can search over internet for the other, other literatures that what will be the modified version of this equation if instead of an isothermal fluid you take a polytropic fluid remember at that point cs square is no longer a constant of the system okay so do that okay so i i am not saying that you must get a different form maybe you get the similar form or a different form just do it yourself and let me know okay if you do, don't do the exercises then this will be difficult to follow these things okay so it is really recommended that you do the exercises small exercises which i i mean suggest you during the lectures okay now when uh, you see in this total equation you can simply see that this term is zero when v is equal to cs then this term should also be zero and that gives us a specific value of the radius which is called the rc that is critical radius sometimes people also say sonic radius because this is the radius at which the flow velocity is just equal to the isothermal sound speed okay and that is equal to g m solar by 2 sound speed square so what is the meaning of that the meaning is that so parker thought that the solar wind basically after getting originated from the coronal flow okay coronal uh, i mean the solar corona when it expands first it starts with a very small velocity then it achieves the sound speed okay at this critical radius or sonic radius and after that it becomes supersonic okay of course when we talk about supersonic or subsonic all are with respect to the isothermal sound speed okay 
but in general whether this is really supersonic or subsonic you have to do with a proper polytropic closure okay but okay so that is another thing so you, you, you can do that for fun now here for Parker's model in this course I will just discuss Parker's model which is based on isothermal closure so you can see that uh, this is the, uh, the critical radius which changes the I mean uh, nature of the solar wind from subsonic to supersonic that was the Parker's initial conjecture somehow that solar wind is getting energy, energy I mean uh, solar, I mean solar wind is getting energy somehow and then it accelerates and when it accelerates it gets in a further I mean uh, I mean the speed of it of course should increase so I mean what is really the reason of the acceleration this is another question we which maybe we should come when we will discuss about turbulence but at this point just think that it's a somehow um, I mean somehow very reasonable consideration that the solar wind basically accelerates after generation so uh, this is much reasonable to see that the velocity first start to be less than cs then reaches cs and then overshoots cs okay now finally you have this relation this one and just but how to do that uh, now you have to just integrate v uh, to uh, see the solution of this whole problem so v will be finally in the final equation v will be a function of r and that's what we have to find so if you do that correctly okay one bonus is cs is your constant you will see the solution is given like this v by cs square minus logarithm of v by cs square is equal to 4 times log r by r c plus 2g m solar by r c a square plus the constant of integration integration c0 and this v by c s is known as Mach number okay so that is a vocabulary you i think i expect all of you know so if Mach number is greater than one the flow is supersonic if it is equal to one this is called transonic or uh, i mean sonic and if it is less than one then it is called subsonic okay so then you can simply plot okay the mach number with this dimensionless number r by rc so mach number is also a dimensionless number and you will see that this type of equation actually permits six type of solutions so these are all denoted by one two three four five six okay so now which solution to take okay now solution one and two they have a problem so this is the solution number one if you see this one and two they are actually double valued so that means for a given value of r by r c or that is a given value of r you can actually have two possible values of corresponding solar wind speed and that is not possible this is unphysical that is not possible okay so that's why these two are not accepted physically now solution three is this one which says that the solar wind is always supersonic because Mach number is greater than one so this is the sonic line and this one so four says the solar wind is subsonic always okay now solar wind it is true that well, there are other considerations by, by which one can actually show that uh, there are evidences. One, of course, from the spacecraft data that solar wind starts being um, subsonic. That is just by calculating the initial coronal temperature and this type of thing. Okay. So, if it starts being subsonic, then there are two possibilities. Either it becomes supersonic after a certain year or it returns subsonic right so in any case three is not possible now four may or may not be possible but once again then the parker's consideration says that solar wind so four is also not a i mean is a valid solution for solar uh, solar wind okay 
So this is called the bridge, bridge. Uh, I mean, breeze solution. Okay, breeze solution. Now, uh, just to write maybe, this is called a breeze solution. Breeze. Okay. Now uh, Parker considered solar wind to start with small velocity and then accelerates thereafter, and that is why finally, for Parker's problem. Solution 5 is the most appropriate because if you see 5, it starts being subsonic and finally gets supersonic. And this is the sonic radius or critical radius. And that's exactly, that means R is equal to R is equal to RC. That is R, R by RC is equal to 1. Okay. And uh, why not 6? Six? 6 is something where the wind decelerates actually. It starts being supersonic and it then becomes subsonic which is not also possible. Okay. Now after that just calculating the I mean uh, observed values just just fitting the observed values with this solution one can actually show that uh, the realistic values of the solar wind speed basically matches closely when C0 or the constant of integration is nearly equal to minus 3 okay so this is also my question to you when you will do the polytropic case then just think and do okay is the conclusion same for polytropic case that means also if there are these six type of solutions and you have also one type of solution which is the perfect and the other not okay is the same story uh, continues I mean uh, does the same story continue there or this is a different story so that's the research part okay so something I will do here but you have to think a bit I mean beyond what is done in the lecture okay. now finally there is another thing so finally we can see that uh, even with this simplistic uh, neutral fluid spherical steady uh, isothermal consideration uh, so I mean Parker's model was powerful to at least give the nature of the solar wind in a very simplified I mean in a um, yeah how to say as a first approximation okay so this was not bad at least the transition from super uh, subsonic to supersonic becomes here now from equation 1 2 and 3 so we should go back to equation 1, 2 and 3. So 1, 2 and 3. So if you uh, carefully see actually 1 and 2 makes 3. So I just check 3. That if V is a solution of the problem then minus V is also a solution. Okay. Because in this term there is V dV. So minus V will uh, not affect. Here you have 1 by V dV. Also there will be no effect, uh, effect of minus V. So that means that uh, if this is a uh, this equation is the equation for some plasma which is uh, flowing outward that can also be the equation of a problem where some plasma or some material is coming spherically inward and this is nothing but the popular problem of spherical accretion which was addressed by Bondi in the year 1952. So accretion, mass accretion in astrophysics is a very deep problem and at that time people started so they they found some I mean observational evidences of mass accretion but they did not know how to proceed analytically and Bondi started by very simplistic model of spherical accretion and then finally it was shown that this model of stellar wind, the equation of stellar wind and the equation of spherical accretion, they are exactly same when we talk about the steady condition. Of course, if the condition is not steady, then they are not equal because del V del T term when it comes, then V and minus V makes a difference. Okay. But for steady case, spherical accretion problem and stellar wind problem is the same thing just for the opposite direction. Okay. So in the problem of spherical accretion, it is assumed 
that the accreted mass starts with a small subsonic speed at infinity. So that means at very large distance there is a source of some mass. For example, let's say some, um, some star comes in the, I mean rather starts to come in the neighborhood of another star. So when it starts to come, so it was at the large distance and then it comes really closer. Okay. So it simply says that some mass is there actually at a large distance which is theoretically at infinity okay and that mass starts with a small subsonic speed so if you see that the I mean the schematic figure is like that let's say I have some uh, let's say I have some um, star with something like that and let's say I have not a star or something but just an idealistic approximation I have a mass source which is isotropically distributed okay around this star okay and from this mass source mass is coming isotropically inside okay to accrete to this uh, star okay so then for with respect to this star at very large distance okay if it starts from very large distance from the star you can say that there is a source of mass and actually source of pressure at infinity so in that case actually infinity pressure pressure at infinity will be I mean something considerably bigger and then it basically is it leads to a in an inward flow okay so again the flow will be from higher pressure to the lower pressure region okay as we all know so this is the this is the problem of spherical accretion of course which starts with um, subsonic speed at infinity but finally accelerates to supersonic speed close to the center of the accretion so now you see it starts with subsonic speed at infinity and so here here for example this one and then it accelerates to have supersonic speed at uh, very close to r is equal to 0 and that simply says that equation uh, solution number 6 will be uh, an appropriate solution for this Bondi's spherical accretion problem okay this problem is also called Bondi's problem okay now however as I said that this was just a first way out to address the accretion problem in astrophysics theoretically but spherical accretion does not represent the reality and actually it is interesting only for academic purpose because to show that correspondence between this one and the stellar wind problem at steady state the equivalence between the two okay but in real accretion the mass gets accreted in the form of a disk okay which basically becomes because you have a star and another star comes and then it I mean uh, I just sorry there's a star and another so it's a very dense and small star is at the center and the less dense star less massive star but the bigger with a bigger volume comes and then it starts to leave mass and this mass with an angular velocity actually starts accreting this mass in the form of a disk okay and that is the famous accretion disk of astrophysics okay and that is exactly our next topic okay Thank you very much.